Now let's get into some John Gruden talk before we transition, because I know both of us have a lot of opinions on this saga. Just to give the listeners some background, last week, not this past Friday, but last Friday, we heard the initial news that there were some racist and derogatory comments made by John Gruden in an email um, where he was speaking ill of Demora Smith, who's the executive director of the Players Association. At the time, John Gruden gave us a half-assed apology and explanation as to why he used the term that he used. Then we find out later in the week, after he coached, at, later in the weekend, I should say, after he coached on Sunday, that there were more than 6,000 emails over a seven-year span um, with not only racist remarks, but misogynistic remarks, gay slander and slurs, a lot of homophobic language. Ultimately, the Raiders, from what we heard, were moving on from him, but then it was released that he's resigning so he would not be a distraction to the team, which ultimately allows him to get the rest of his money. He was owed about $40 million from the Raiders. It's a lot to digest here, Trip. So you give me your thoughts. One day we're gonna give him find a way to give him that money. You you did say that. <laughs> yeah, we well, we knew we knew they were gonna find a way. Um let Trip, let me know if you want to start from the beginning, how you were feeling when you first heard the comments or where, where you want to pick it up from. But again, there's a lot to digest here. Okay. Let me let me let me start with this. And I'm gonna you know, I'm gonna quote uh the the, the great battle rapper DNA. His uh his his catch uh phrase his catch slogan I can't say the whole thing because we we on TV but I'll, I'll I'll break it down enough for you guys to get the point and in, in regards to 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 John Gruden and how I feel about him get him the f out of here no get that racist homophobic sexist slander the f out of here I need all of that out of here right now I'm so glad that that this came to light because I'm tired of these in the closet racist, sexist, homophobic men in sports that are taking away positions from qualified women, qualified minorities. Uh, you, you know, it, it's sickening. And he ain't the only one. You can believe that. John Gruden is not the only one. He's the only one that got caught right now, but he ain't alone. And I said this, you know, shout out to Sean Fontaine and you know and I and I'll shoot the shit family but I said this on the podcast as well John Gruden is not the only person that should be up out of here if there's anyone else that is in an NFL organization that was going back and forth in those email threads as well and they're still ha- they still have jobs right now they need to be out of here too because guess what I don't even want to hear that oh I'm not like that because John, just it's just John Gruden is like that because if you are condoning his actions and by not speaking out you are condoning his actions. You are just as much of the problem as he is. You share that same mentality that he does. And not only does he need to be gone, you need to be gone. He shouldn't even be getting paid. We shouldn't even be talking about, are they going to figure out some kind of settlement to, to get him the rest of that $40 million? That's a bunch of bull crap. And I'm, 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 I'm sick of it. Uh, you know, his, his buddy is still, is still coaching with the, you know, with the, with the, uh, the Raiders right now which to me is mind boggling in itself because you can't sit up here and tell me that you didn't know John Gruden was like this. I, I'm, I, I can't, I'm so sick of the, Oh no, it's just this guy. It's just this guy. It's just, just no, bro. You, I can tell you right now. I've, I've, I've known, I've known you Eric for what, maybe what, five, six years now. Well, I'll tell six you, years, yep. you know, when you, when you're around your friends and you're around people like that, you know who these people are. You know your good friends, you know your bad friends. You know your friends, you know, that, that they, they may say some, some wild stuff when you go out. You, you know, you know your, your friends that got their whole act together. But you know these things. I don't want to hear that you've been a, a friend of this person for all of these years and you didn't know that this is the way he was. I'm sorry, but I am glad. You know, Eric, I, 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 I told you I, I wasn't rocking with him from when he stole Tony Dungy's ring down in Tampa Bay, because that should have been Tony Dungy's first damn Super Bowl ring in Tampa Bay. And since then, I have not ever really rocked with John Gruden like that. And now I feel validated in my reasoning because all of this stuff came out. And again, I'm glad it came out. I'm glad he's going. I hope he doesn't ever get it back into the NFL because I don't think he's changing. He wouldn't, he, we wouldn't even be talking about it if the, if, if the whole investigation with the Washington football team wasn't going on, he would have continued to, to go on and collect checks from the NFL and internally, this is who he, he really is. And we found out about it and I'm glad we did. 
Goodbye. See you. Sayonara, sucker. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's cool. I 1000% agree with you because, there, again, there, there's a lot of things that go with this. Uh, and it's not just the emails. The, like you said, the first part is the coaching staff staying, right? Like you guys were around him every day, probably putting in 12 hour, 15 hour days together. You knew who this man was. Yep. Let's, let's be honest. Also, one of the things that um, wasn't discussed, and I found this out through some other research, his son, who's on the coaching staff as a strength and conditioning coach, is still there, which to me, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a little odd because it's like, all right, so you don't really rock with your father like that because you would think you would just step away too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You going, so you're going to tell me you didn't know your dad was a racist, homophobic, misogynistic piece of crap. You, that's, you didn't know that's what your father was. That's that's exactly what I was getting to because I'm like, either you don't rock with your dad so much that you never saw this behavior, right? That your y'all relationship is so bad that you never saw this behavior, which I find hard to believe because obviously he got you a job with the organization. Yeah, he didn't get you a job right. with the other team. You with right. him. He got you a job with him, right? And I'm sure you're probably one of the highest paid strength and conditioning coaches in the NFL because your dad was one of the highest paid coaches. Um, but then your dad gets fired. And so are you going to walk around the facility and pretend I never saw this? I, that's, that's not the father who raised me. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's all bull. Um, I want to, I want to say this too. And, and I got to give credit to the man who I heard it from, because from what I hear, there is much more coming out from this. Shout out to Peter Schrager who works on the NFL network. I was listening to something. He was a part of a panel and he said, that this is just the tip of the iceberg, that there is a lot more coming out to your point trip. It wasn't just John Gruden. There were others in front offices, other head coaches, other owners who shared the same type of mindsets and, and words and, and expressed these things through email. That's why they're still combing through over 600,000 emails because there is much more to come on this. There are rumors that the Washington football team is going to come out of this very messy. Mm-hmm. That's from what I'm hearing. Oh, That's we knew, why we knew that from, from when it first well, went the, down. We the, knew some stuff was going to come out. Right. And the Washington yeah. football team was already in hot water from yeah. all the sexual assault allegations and sexual misconduct that we heard about in the summertime. You know, them trying to prostitute out cheerleaders and all that good stuff. So we knew they were in trouble. But it's it's it should not be viewed as ironic that the Washington football team tried to make this past weekend Sean Taylor retirement number day. And it was a last minute thing at that because they announced that in the middle of the week. That wasn't something that was planned out ahead of time. I'm down here in the area. I know some some football team fans who said we didn't know about it until there was an email blast sent out on Wednesday that yeah. they were doing that. You know what I'm saying? Which you and I both know as as avid fans of our teams, when they retire a number, you know about that before the season even starts. Yeah. They highlight it on the calendar. You know exactly. what I'm saying? So the Washington football team did that as a way to try to gloss over what's going on. And I think try to cushion a blow for the news that's going to be coming out this week. There's supposed to be some big news coming out this week in, in regards to the Washington football team that we're going to have to get into when it actually happens. But John Gruden, there's no place for him in football at all. I don't want to see him on a network. I don't want to see him analyzing the game, talking about the game. None of those things. None of those things. You have no place in the workplace, in this workplace in particular. I'm, I'm a little disappointed in guys like Tony Dungy, who I really respect. And I like Tony Dungy a lot and Mike Tirico. But those guys immediately went to his defense when the initial news came out. Yeah. When the news came out that Friday and, and Tony Dungy and Mike Tirico were part of the Sunday telecast, Sunday night, they were in defense of him and said, this is the guy I know. I've never seen this side of John Gruden. And I, I, I thought it was premature because it was like, all right, you guys may have worked with him from a distance. Let's hear everything that comes out first. Let's not start defending this guy as if this isn't him. Because guess what? Seven years worth of emails. That's you, bro. You, ain't no ain't, ain't no lapse in judgment over seven years. Exactly. <laughs> That's you. Excuse me. So yeah, so so I that was the one thing I felt like just let's not if you worked with him from a distance, just, just say hey, look, you know we we had a kind of a relationship in passing. I don't know him that well, but they went to defense for him and they were quick to say you know we should move on. These emails were ten years ago. It don't matter how long ago they were. When you make them type of comments, that first comment about the Morris Smith was disgusting. And then think, the, here's some of the other things that was said. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Hart, you know, lost his opportunity to host the Oscars because of a tweet that he made from 10, 10 plus years ago. 
Yeah. So let's keep it let's keep it straight across the board. Let's let's keep it straight across the board. Uh, John again, John Gruden has no place in the NFL. I'm glad that all of this has come out now. I think also kudos to Brandon Staley, the coach of the Chargers, who made a great statement where he said, "Being a head coach is more than just X's and O's." we have to earn the respect of these guys in our locker room. And there's no place in our game for those type of comments and that type of thinking. Like he said, I, I expect these guys to, to go through a wall for me and, and to come every day prepared to work. And in turn, I've got to show them that they can trust me enough and that they can respect who I am as a man. John Gruden broke that code with the things that he was saying in these emails. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a lot to digest. I don't know how the Raiders move forward, to be honest. Yeah, they won yesterday but I still think this will linger in their locker room. I mean, we can't forget they have an openly gay player on their, on their roster. Yeah. Call, call on the save. Yeah. So he actually requested um, a, a day off time off. Yeah. Uh, he, he took a day off, I think on Friday leading up yeah. to the game. So, you know, that's just one player that we know it directly affects, but there are a lot of young black men uh, in that locker room. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Who, black men, in, you know, is in, in that organization. Right. Hey. So, you know, there, there are a lot of people there who had interactions with them who I'm sure were very upset to find out that this is who you truly were. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, I, I'm happy that the emails came out because the quicker we know, the quicker we can get you up out of there. Exactly. Maybe now uh, our guy down uh, in, in uh, Kansas City, uh, Brian, uh, I mean, uh, Eric, Eric B. Enemy, uh, can, can get a head coaching job that he's deserved uh, for the, over the past couple of years since he, he has produced an MVP and had a Super Bowl offense uh, the past uh, two years to, you know, the past two seasons. So, you know, maybe, maybe it's about time we can get somebody else up in, in those, those positions since Gruden is out of there. I do think, you know, I mean, clearly, you know, I'd say his son got to go too, but you know, he's, he wasn't an email. If he wasn't an email, I know they, they're not, they're not going to just up in and get rid of him. But, you know, as, as you mentioned, you know, Eric, there's no, there's no way, that my father, this is this is who he is, and I don't know about it. I wasn't yeah. raised a certain way. I I didn't. I never heard. And that's and again, that's what, which is why you know when you when you talk about your disappointment with Tony Dungy, I feel you. When I see when I see all of these these black players coming in to speak up on on this man's behalf after hearing the stuff that he's saying, I'm just, I'm completely disappointed in you guys. Like I am so disappointed that you you are still jumping to this man's defense. I get it, you know. Maybe when you know he came to you know to to Tampa or when he when he got to Oakland, he, he has a good rapport. I mean, he is the, he's the, the the QB uh uh you know guru coach or whatever. So yeah, you know you might not have seen that in, in practice, but you can't just jump automatically and say this is not who he is because how many barbecues did you go to at his house? How many times did you did your family go on vacation with his family? Because that's when you really get to know somebody. You don't you don't know your coach. If you if you if you don't hang out with that man outside of of practice in, in game time, if you don't hang out with his family, you can't sit up here and tell me that you know this man. You know the work the work coach. Where everybody everybody knows the difference between the work you and the home you, and that's one thing that 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 that, that people tend to forget just because. Oh, you know, I know this guy for so long. We've worked together for 10 years. <coughs> Excuse me. I've never seen anything like this. Okay, but tell me when you at work and when you at home, tell me what's the difference in what you do at work and what you do at home. Because I'm pretty sure I ain't the only one. I know how to act when I go to work. I know how to act when I go to church. I know how to act if I got to go to court. And it's not necessarily the same way I act. You know, we don't speak the same way as we do when it's just us hanging out. As we right. do when we out in, 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 in at different various professional settings. So if you have not been with this man outside of anything football related, then you can't tell me that you know this man so well and he's such a great person because you don't know that. You can't say that because, again, we have two different versions of ourselves. Everybody got split personalities. They got the work you and they got the home you. That's just what it is. Yeah. I, to me, my disappointment comes from, like you said, the defense of John Gruden after his BS apology, right? So when you heard about the emails, if it shocked you and you say, man, that's not the guy I, I thought I knew. Okay. But once you heard his apology, 
and you're still trying to defend them, that's where I have a problem with it. Because now we heard the, we saw the comments and then you're trying to justify them by saying, well, that's, I, I, I use the term rubber lips as a way to call out somebody from lying. No, you're not. No, no, you're not. What? <laughs> like, you, first of all, who, who man, you said this man's lips look like Michelin tires. We know what you were, what, what you were insinuating about Demora Smith. Exactly. You were not. You were not. I had nothing to do with lying or you thinking he was lying. And if that is a term that you use when you think someone's lying, show me the other emails where you use that same terminology. Because there should be plenty of emails where you've been calling people rubber lips for your whole life. If that's what you really use. So miss me with all that nonsense. Um, and, and in terms of the emails too, I want to know how much Mark Davis knew because Mark Davis went out his way to rehire John Gruden. Mm -hmm. So Mark Davis is a guy who has known John Gruden for 20 some odd years from his first stint with the Raiders under his dad's ownership group. How much did you know? Because if you openly, it's a good old boys club. right. And that's my point. If you knew this and you still hired this man, then there should be some penalty for you as well. If, if the NFL is truly trying to sweep this out of the game and say, look, this is not who we are. We, we want to be better moving forward. Then show me you want to be better and produce the emails. Just like Demora Smith said, show us the emails where every time a black head coaching candidate didn't get the job, I want to see how they were spoke about. Were they being judged purely off their performance as an assistant coach or offensive coordinator? Or were they being judged purely off the fact that their skin was a little darker than the other candidate who came in. Because let's not forget, just last year, we heard an assistant coach say he was told, I'm not the right minority. Yeah. Right? So I want to see what the emails look like moving forward as well. But you know, Eric, and, and, it's, and it's sickening, but you and I both know that there's a different set of rules uh, depend, depending on, on, on who you are. And, you know, we know that because... We literally sat here and watched. Well, we didn't see the tape, but there's a the tape. <laughs> but of Robert Kraft getting a rub and tug in an illegal establishment. And although he didn't have anything to do with the girls being there, he was utilizing the services of these girls that were there. And, and I'm pretty damn sure that this wasn't the first time that he's been to a place like this in his life. And guess what? Did, it, did anything happen to Robert Kraft? I mean, that's that's one of many instances because I'm not going to pretend that our owner, Jim Ursay, just a few years ago, wasn't pulled over while drunk and on pain medication. Yeah. Right? Uh, we're not going to pretend that Daniel Snyder, the owner of the Washington football team, ain't in the headlines every every month for, for something new. Right? So, as you mentioned, it's the good old boys club. But if you're, Robert, if, if you're Roger Goodell, you have an opportunity – to kind of change the perception of the NFL. Yeah. And I'm not saying you got to force guys to leave ownership. Certain, certain things don't require that drastic of a measure, right? But you should also be fair and say, look, Mark Davis, you knew some of these things was going on. Maybe we find you. Yeah, maybe we, we just, maybe we gotta, we gotta hold your feet to the fire a little bit. Right, we gotta hold your feet to the fire a little bit because if we expect everyone to start acting accordingly moving forward, we just can't pretend that these things didn't happen again mark davis went out of his way to recruit john gruden who was doing television he went out of his way it wasn't like john gruden was on somebody's sideline john gruden had been out of football for damn near 12 years yep. you went out your way to get this man you have a relationship with this man there's no way you can tell me that in the 20 years that you were around him and exchanged emails with him you never once saw a glimmer of this type of behavior from him now it, you can't you can't tell me that and you, you, you made a great point uh, on the podcast as well uh, when you spoke about, you know, wanting to know if there were any emails floating around in regards to the purchasing of the Carolina Panthers. Because we know that Diddy had a group together that, you know, pretty, I'm pretty sure they had the, they had the money <laughs> to, to make the sale, to, to make the purchase rather. And, and that didn't happen. And we saw that. So, you know, you made a great point. I would like to see that. Uh, as well um so you know they they have the nfl does have an opportunity to i guess put the backing behind the the, the changes that they're supposedly making you know um we we know we know the nba you know if 
you know, we catch something like this going on in the NBA, we know that owner is is, is going to get up out of here because we've seen that. And that was Donald Sterling. I mean, how many years ago was that now? We were talking about. Are we talking about ten years now? How many years has it been since Donald Sterling was kicked out of the league? Five, it's, five, six, at least nah, five we, years, we, right? We, I think we're a little more than that because that was right before the Golden State dynasty. So we're we're probably at about seven, eight years since the Donald Sterling uh, fiasco and all that right. came out. They, exactly. So you know, to I mean, and we always talk about the NBA being ahead of the curve, but now you have an opportunity because you got the situation going on in Washington. You know, you got. The John Gruden situation in, in in with the Raiders, and again, this is someone. This is an owner who's known this man for twenty years. I want to see what's going on there. Let's 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 see. Let's let's bring everything out, put it all on the table, and let's figure out where we go from here. That's all I want. Yes, yes, sir. I agree. Let's I'm gonna fuck up. This is your African King is coming, Michael Blackson. You watching real friends do a talk? Get real with it, my son. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real 